Good morning, welcome back. Today we're gonna do a quick follow-up on Kevin's guitar that we put pickup covers on yesterday, the aged aluminum ones. Anyways, yesterday I was using my phone to record a video and I didn't have the information in front of me, but uh, we were talking about the year and stuff. And I could have looked at the headstock and gave you the year right then and there, but I had the information here, so his dry rub or hand rubbed uh, finish, he had dry rub like a pair of ribs on a grill, but no, uh, he had that hand rub finish on it. And I looked all over, searched it far and wide. I couldn't find anything really like it other than a high gloss finish one, but I did find the information on it and that uh, the production year was uh, Wednesday, June 27th of 2007. It was batch zero and his was the 324th one made. The only thing I couldn't find out um, when I was looking up information on it was what pickups and stuff were in it. But yesterday, as you've seen, we pulled them out. It did have a PAF style pickups in it uh, with the patent applied for stickers on it. So uh, we finally got all the information on that. So it's too bad that I didn't have this information yesterday when we actually did the video, but I figured I'd do a quick follow up and let you guys know, again, it was uh, produced on Wednesday, June 27th, 2007, batch zero, and his was the 324th made. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, other than that, we're going to check out the 135 again. So the worship pastor, Mark, has had a few issues with this. These cases always screw me up. There's usually one here or here or one there in there, but this one does not have that. So he was having some issues with it, and we kept thinking it was the intonation on it. And we've monkeyed around with it a few times, and the intonation is still a little high because of fret buzz. The first three frets, uh, the strings will ring off of it, and that is because the big E string nut has wore down so far that the string just lays on the first three frets. So I stuck a piece of paper plate in there when I went out to the church the other day to uh, screw around with it and see if I could get it going again. And once I've adjusted all the saddles and the bridge up and down and pickups and I was like, it's got to be the nut. So I went into their kitchen and I found a pair of scissors in a drawer and I snipped off the edge of a paper plate stuck it in there and sure enough that was its issue so today we are going to measure the nut on it and see if the nut that i have i have two of them i have a, a regular bone nut and then i have a scallop bone nut. i don't know why i got the cutters i'm not going to cut the strings and if one of these fit we're going to change the nut on it because I think that's the only way that this thing is going to start ringing again. So I've used this on a couple of other uh, guitars. I put this one on a Zach Wilde guitar back in the day, and I put one on a uh, Tobacco Burst Gibson Les Paul Custom. And this is the scalloped bone nut. Really nice nut. Uh, I really like the way it looked on the guitars that I put it on. And then I also have just a regular bone nut here. So we're going to mic these out and see if one of them fits. If one of these fits, I have a appointment at Augment Guitar in Menor, Ohio. Uh, because this is not my guitar and I've only changed a couple nuts, I figured I would take it to a professional to have it changed because this guitar is played two, three times a week, and it needs to be right. Would you be quiet? So anyhow, the Augment guitar in Mineral, Ohio, I uh, was introduced to that by one of the guitar players at church, Matt, and I was telling him how I take all my stuff down to the Lays Loft in Akron, Ohio to get all my refinish work done and setups and stuff like that when I don't feel confident enough to mess with it. So he said, well, why don't you try Augment? 
I check them out. Uh, they're on Facebook. They have their own website. Uh, I'll put the links below in this video to Augment Guitar. Uh, they're supposed to be just as good as Lay's. So uh, we're going to give them a shot. Uh, I just got the information on him about a week after I took the Silver Burst down to Lay's to get finished. But uh, I had most of the work started there anyhow. So I figured, yeah, might as well just let them run that project out. You guys know. If you're watching for the first time, you don't know, but I took the Silver Burst down there to get a complete rebuild, a uh, refinish, and uh, we'll discuss that one later. But anyways, back to Lays and Supposedly, they're going to be hand-in-hand -hand as far as in builds and finish work and stuff like that. They're a lot closer to me, so hopefully when I run this out, we can do a video there of his shop, uh, check everything out, see some of his builds, some of his uh, projects going on, and uh, just kind of check out what, what's going on there at Augment. So uh, without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and mic this nut out and see if the ones that I have are going to fit because the ones that I have here are actually for a Les Paul. There we go. I got to get this zeroed back out again. There we go. So 43.13 millimeter. I'm going to do it in inches now and see what we get there. 1.69. So let's check this. I think uh, it's going to be just like the Les Paul. One's uh, 1.69, so that one will work. And so will this one. So it does have the same size nut as a Les Paul. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, check these two over here. I got a standard and a studio. That's a 1.69. And this one here is a 1.64 so the studio is just a smidget uh, narrower than the standard or the classic classic standard traditional they're basically the same guitar uh, other than the model that they still screen on the headstock uh, maybe they do some different weight relief in the bodies that one has no weight relief so uh, again I, in my opinion they're all the same so now it's just going to be a uh, personal preference of what should go on there and just because it's a classic guitar I'm thinking the regular bone nut should go on there so I guess this is be the the nut that we take down there and have it put on I'll ask I'll go ahead and ask Mark though because he might want this one on there and uh, I'll ask uh, Ben at Augment Guitars what he thinks too I'll take them both out there He's on vacation right now, so we're going to have to wait till next week. But what I figured I would do today is dig around and try to find an old nut and grind it down and get these strings loosened up and moved out of the way, tape it off, fill the groove for the big E string with some ground up nut, put a drop or two of super glue in there and... Uh, refile it just a little bit so he can use it i don't know if uh, it's worth doing all that i gotta see if i have a old nut because i used to have piles of them and i have no idea where they are now i might have sold them all off in a lot of parts that i did not that long ago so i'm gonna go ahead and end this video for now and if i end up screwing around with this big e slot uh We'll go ahead and video that, but I figured I would at least show you guys the two nuts that I have, mic them out, see if they'd fit. Indeed, these are going to fit, and tell you about Augment Guitars, and take another quick look at the 135ES that used to hang here. So, I think this is its second or third trip back here. Um, it took a few times to realize it was a, a nut issue. But, um, yeah, he is going to give it a full setup too after the nut as well. So hopefully this will 
go ahead and run for him for a long time without any issues. The other reason that I don't really want to mess with it, again, because it's not my guitar, and you know, Gibson, they clear coat over top of the nuts when they build the guitars, and I don't want to chip away any of the finish or put any uh, cracks from the nut down through the finish in the neck. I don't know why that they put this type of nut in this guitar. It's a really soft nut. I don't even think it's bone. I think it's more of a, a synthetic material or a plastic. But uh, definitely, I think it'll sound a lot better with the, the bone nut in there. Maybe we'll have to put some nut lube in it. Maybe that's why they put this nut on here is so it was softer and the string would move in it. I'm uh, not quite sure. Again, I'm just starting to get familiar with semi hollows. This was my second or third one because I had a 120T and I had a Gibson Les Paul ES with P90s. Then I got this 135 ES. I got the 345 ES and I have another Les Paul ES with uh, humbuckers. So I'm just starting to get into uh, these semi hollows and figure things out on them. Most everything that I've ever uh, dealt with has been Les Pauls. I've had a few Stratocasters. Um, I'm not really into the, the Fender scene, but I'm thinking about getting back into it. I did keep this one here just because I like how relict it is and that they only made this in 1983 and 84. So I've been hanging on to this one. I got it priced high. so. If uh, people want it, they're going to have to pay for it to take it out of my hands because I'm just kind of not ready to let it go yet. So that's that on uh, the guitars here. So we will uh, hopefully get a video of Augment Guitars and so you guys can see that and uh, get this nut changed so Mark can get to back kicking on it. Uh, I guess he's going to use... Uh, Kevin's guitar for a little while while he's waiting on this, the one that we did the pickup covers on yesterday. So uh, I guess that's it guys. Uh, this project here is not really my project because I got somebody else going to do it unless I decide to try to fill this uh, big E-string e -string slot uh, temporarily into because uh, like I said it's before he gets back and I'm not sure exactly when uh, I'll be able to get this back to him as soon as possible so stay tuned uh, I'm going to put uh, another pickup cover uh, I think I'm gonna do it on the 1960 here I think I just want to put the uh, top leave the bottom one naked this is the 2005 1960 the pick guards been removed the other than that, uh, everything on it is the truss rod cover. I have that laying over there. It said classic on it. I think it was a little redundant to say classic. Uh, silk screened on there and on the truss rod. I think the uh, plain truss rod cover cleans it up a little more and makes it look more vintage. So anyways, the next project that we're gonna do here. So uh, stay tuned. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Till next time.